on this episode of Postcards. My dad made a painting and I thought it looked so good. So I didn't do it right then, but I knew I wanted to try it. Everything always comes back to the youth for us. So while we have a lot of great volunteers, it's, it's, uh, it's not really anything if we don't have any youth. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies, Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota, on the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. picture of your wife here. A youngster there. <laughs> there. My dad made a painting and I thought it looked so good. So I didn't do it right then, but I knew I wanted to try it. And he did mostly oil painting. I took a piece of paper and I drew a circle on it. Then I went up like this, the circle's up here, and I go, let's put two little teeth on there, two eyes and two ears, and it was, I told him it was a bulldog. He told me that I should be an artist.
1925, and in, in Jamestown, Colorado. It's a little deal in the hills, you know. If you close your eyes, you miss the whole town when you're driving through. No, there's not really any driving through because it's in the mountains. We, we were married in 1950. Lived in Longmont for a while. Five years, I think it was. Did stonework, brickwork. And then uh, we moved to Minnesota. We built this house and we had four kids. Marilyn, Bob, Ron, Jan. We had one that didn't live, but they didn't name it. It was just uh, and uh, eighty six. <laughs> Uh, we started to build a house in 1958. Well, Bob and and uh, Marilyn, and Millie. Millie mixed the mortar for me for a while. And uh, started right on this corner, right behind me. I think there's about four or 5,000 brick in the whole thing. <clears throat> and I, I bricked it up cheaper than if I'd have had a carpenter put siding on it and bought the brick myself. So I had to have it my way. Yeah, I carved a little horse on his hind legs out of walnut. It's nice wood. They all, the horses are, you know, they're almost all the same, but you, they just, they have character like people. It, it, it takes a little while to get it just right. Yeah. Had my, my little horse and I had a wolf I carved out of soap. You remember when they had soap carvings? ivory soap, and uh, this gal came along and looked at the horse and said, oh, that's nice, would you like to sell that? She's uh, probably a first student in college out there. I said, yeah, I'll sell it. How? She says, how much do you want for it? I said, 75 cents. <laughs> that's what I sold my first carving for, 75 cents. One guy, Andrew, he says, I've got a horse for you to carve. It's for ex-governor Kui. And I said, holy cow. So I, I, he brought a picture of it. It's Appaloosa, you know, with the spots on the hind end. And, and I heard the story about it. This guy even got up and told a story about this horse he was riding in Montana or someplace. And a grizzly bear was in the area. And the horse whinnied enough that he woke everybody up, saved them all from a bear. <laughs> and, and he said he uh, would like to have a carving. That's why I carved it. What did it say about the artist? He's a master artist, yeah, <laughs> master <a> carver. Master <laughs> <wood> carver. <laughs> that was a laugh. <laughs>
we were uh, stationed in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, we were taking some training there. And then before the training was over, we were ready to go overseas, and we got a new airplane, brand new B-24, shiny silver colored. And so they wanted a uh, nose art, what they call nose art. So I painted this lady with just scanty a little bit, and we called it the Homeward Angel. And uh, it was quite an airplane. We flew, we flew ten missions with it, and it got all shot up that time. And uh, after that, we never flew it. We finished the rest of our missions. Never flew that plane again. But when we we went from where we were stationed to uh, Naples. I flew in that plane. I thought, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I it it might trip or something. Yeah. Watercolor is so fresh because it's quick. If you don't like it, you can change it, but uh, you got to know how to do it. A lot of people think that once you paint with watercolor, it's done. You can't do anything to it, but you can do a lot of stuff to watercolor. People don't know about it. <laughs> I like it when somebody likes something I've done. I know one thing, it's a good way to take away tension. Yeah, if you're interested in something like you're not thinking about anything else. But that, that's, that's another thing about it. But I never ever thought of doing it for money, you know, just for pleasure. That's about it. <laughs> I don't know what he's laughing at.
Have an idea for postcards? Send your story suggestions to postcards at pioneer.org. program that we are running now and have founded and turned into a nonprofit is called the Menu Youth Garden. And what the Menu Youth Garden is, it's a plot of land and greenhouse originally that is lended to us through the Midwest Tech Campus in Wilmer. We originally were given four acres of land and a greenhouse that was built in the 1970s to utilize to grow fresh fruits and vegetables that were not commonly found in Minnesota with the intent of serving underrepresented populations in the Wilmer community to provide them with fresh fruits and vegetables that they might not be able to get in Minnesota, but they were used to getting at home. The overall goal is to provide youth in the community with some, some jobs and to give them an opportunity to do some work that might be a little more artistic or help them work with their hands a little bit more. Instead of sitting in the house, playing with their phones or looking at a screen, they get outside, get involved in the, the dirt and start to produce for, for the family members in their household and then also provide for themselves and hopefully give a little knowledge about eating healthy, making sure that they live healthy, sustainable lives and then give them some entrepreneurial experience as well. It started out with just a youth garden. The goal was to utilize all four acres of the land that the Midwest Tech Campus was providing for us. Myself, Ben Larson, and Abdueli Youssef, we quickly found out that because none of us know anything about gardening, we were in some trouble. So we <laughs> had to downsize early and we ended up using one acre of land and then putting the greenhouse to use. We grew things like bitter balls and watermelon and a lot of common things that were found in Minnesota, but we tried to spread it out to find some more diverse plants and, and vegetables. And we found out that Minnesota doesn't have a great climate for growing bitter balls or other uh, vegetables that are not common to Minnesota. So there was a very good reason why they weren't being grown outside. What we're doing now is we have a full season, all year round CSA program. And what a CSA is, it's a community supported agriculture program where the goal is to get vegetables in the hands of seniors, people that don't have a lot of money, people that come from all different backgrounds. We're trying to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to, to have some fresh fruits and vegetables. So we're trying to really address access and price. And by running our CSA the way we are, we're going to be able to address both of those things at the same time. So the way that we're doing it this year is that we are offering CSA at a discounted price to people that can afford it. And every person that subscribes or becomes a member, we then give a free CSA bag with the same amount of vegetables, same amount of everything to somebody receiving SNAP benefits or senior citizens. We're hoping that people in the community that can afford it will see that this initiative will have a massive impact on the overall community by not only giving their families fresh fruits and vegetables, but also giving another family that might not have that access or have the money to do so. Hopefully they can see the value in, in doing that. Working with the, the youth of the community has been incredible. We never thought we would have as much interest in our program as we, as we have had. We partner with a couple of organizations in town, one of them Central Minnesota Jobs and Training, the Dream Academy, Wilmer Public Schools, and the ALC in town. Everything always comes back to the youth for us. So while we have a lot of great volunteers, it's, it's, uh, it's not really anything if we don't have any youth. It's been incredible that the youth are interested. The journey that this has taken my life on is a journey that I 
honestly never thought I would ever be doing. I have no experience or I had no experience with gardening, really anything with agriculture before starting this program. But my passion is to enrich the lives of youth and help make sure that people that are underrepresented in our communities have the same opportunities that I had growing up. I really wanted to make it so that the youth are really able to do anything. I want to instill that in them as a core part of themselves. It really has taken me on a journey that I, I never expected. I went from being a, a butcher to a radio guy to now I'm working um, in my free time in a, in a garden setting, in a greenhouse. I just, it, this couldn't have impacted my life any more than it has or any more positively than it already has. Like this is the greatest experience that I've ever had. The youth are incredible. The Wilmer community overall is such a giving, caring community. They've embraced us with open arms and they really have just let us run wild with, with whatever we come up with next. Are you a fan of postcards? Follow us on your favorite social media platform to get the latest news on upcoming episodes, behind the scenes, and more. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies, Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota, on the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.com. Dot org.